Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, where today we're talking about our home valuation site. My name is Tom Shively, and I am the Director of Training and Engagement here at BuySide, and I'm also joined by customer success specialist extraordinaire Todd Williams, uh, who's going to be helping us out with our Q&A when we get there. So thank you all for being here. Uh, we really appreciate your time. We know some people are going through some really hard times, but we're all sitting at home uh, to be safe. And as my wife keeps telling me, I can't keep watching The Princess Bride. So thank you for being here on this webinar. I really appreciate that. And I know everybody here at BuySide does as well. So today we're gonna be talking about our home valuation site. So a quick agenda for what we're gonna be looking at today is this is what I hope to accomplish at the end of this webinar. This is what I hope we walk away from today with. And one, who is BuySide? So why did we make this tool? Why did we make these things? Well, we're gonna answer that today. We're also gonna be talking about what you, what BuySide can do for you. So what is it that this home valuation site is gonna be able to do for you in your business? And it is such a powerful tool. And we'll talk about that a little bit today. So then we're also gonna talk about your home valuation site. So what it is, and how you can use it. So what are those things that uh, a client is gonna be able to see when they go to this home valuation site? What are the things that they're gonna be able to interact with? And how much work does it take on your part to get somebody to go and check out a home valuation? What their home is worth on your site with your branding on it? How much effort is that gonna take? Hint, it's almost none. So that's what we're gonna be looking at today. Uh, we're also gonna take a sneak peek of what next week's webinar is. If you don't know, if you haven't seen, we have weekly webinars for the next couple of weeks. As long as we are stuck inside, we're gonna be doing these weekly webinars. So go ahead and sign up for those. Uh, we'll take a look at what we're gonna look at next week. And at the very end, we're gonna have a Q&A hopefully with Todd, there is a torrential downpour where he is. He said there's like 40 mile an hour winds and his building is shaking. So hopefully we don't lose him. So Todd, I really hope you're okay. Uh, and we'll see you at the Q and A. Okay, so what is, who is BuySide and why did we make this? Well, big data is not the future. Big data is now. And what big data to us means is signals. So what are those signals that are getting sent out? What are, how are we gonna be able to direct people's attention and all of that information that is out there, how can we use that for our business? How can we take all of that raw information and put it into one usable information, uh, one usable place so that you can use that information in your business? So that is one of the reasons that we created is there's so many different signals out there. We found that there really wasn't a place that took all of those signals that we use, that we can see out there and put them in one consolidated place. So somebody else had a thought similar to this, and it was back in 1926. Hopefully you know who this guy is. His name's Nikola Tesla. I'm sure some of you drive a car named after him. But he called his shot way long ago. I mean, check this quote out from 1926. He said, when wireless is perfectly applied to the whole earth, it will be convert converted into a huge brain, which is in fact all things being particles of a real and rhythmic whole. What does that sound like? He's talking about the internet. And this is about 70 years before the internet became a popular thing. He called it back then, and it's because he saw those signals into the way that technology was evolving. We shall be able to communicate with one another instantly, irrespective of distance. Not only this, but through television and telephony, we shall be able to see and hear one another perfectly through we are, though we are face to face despite intervening distance of thousands of miles. So he talked about talking on a cell phone, right? He talked about FaceTime, he's calling Zoom meetings back in 1926, which is like 90 years before that was even invented. And he, all we can do all of this and the instruments will fit in our vest pocket. So he's calling small cell phones back then. Well, he saw the signals back then. He saw what things could be and how we can use that and what it will eventually become. And we did that same thing. Uh, so how can we apply that same logic to today? Successful companies leverage this data into gaining a competitive edge. All big companies do this. If you go to Google, if you go to Apple, if you're on Amazon, they all know what we're clicking on, what we're looking at, what we're shopping for. So they take all of that 
and they try to surface that so that whatever you're looking at, you can get more of it. They even know, they put things that we like in specific places on the page because they know where our eye is going to go so that they we know that that's the place that they want us to look. So uh, Amazon, in fact, uses buyer trends to know how much to charge for items. In fact, have you ever done this thing where you go on Amazon and you're looking to buy something, right? And you put something in your cart at $10.50 and you go and you, let's say you take a client call, somebody calls you, your grandma calls you or something, and you come back and it's $10.80. Well, what happened? That's supply and demand. They know how many people are looking for that Elsa's Frozen Castle or the Olaf slippers or you know whatever you're shopping for. And the other thing you might hear about is the anticipatory shipping. Now, what that means is that before you click buy now, they're going to ship it directly to your local distribution center. And this is when they look at the history of your buying or the history of buying of anybody else. They look at signals, billions of signals from people just like you. So they know when you're looking at an item that they should send it to that direct center before you click that button. Now the question is, is we now know that that exists, that technology is out there. So how can we leverage that big data for real estate? So how can we effectively use that information? Now here's the challenge. The challenge is that data is fragmented, right? We have all of that information. We can see it, right? From our CRM, from our mobile phones, from our saved properties on our agent websites, from the open house uh, sign-ins. All of these different things. Your data is in a bunch of different places. And it would be impossible to consolidate that and still run a business, right? So the solution here is exactly what BuySide has done. Is we take signals, we take that data from all of those different places, from Zillow, from Spacio, from your CRM, from wherever, and we put them all into a usable place so that you can use that information. We can show our clients that great information that is coming from all of those places. And it's gonna help you do three things. Capture more seller leads, win more listings, and close deals quicker because all clients effectively have the same two questions, right? When somebody's going to sell their home, they have two questions and what are they? They are, how much is my home worth and who's gonna buy it? And we can show them that before we even get there, before they even sign on that dotted line, that we have the answers to those questions. So that once they know we're that agent, we're that person that has that information, Go ahead and sign on the dotted line and we're gonna capture those leads, we're gonna win those listings, and we're gonna close those deals quicker. All right, really quickly, before we jump into the product, we do have a couple of things that I wanted to share with you, and that is we have a Buy Side Insiders group on Facebook. So you can go ahead if you want to check out our community, see some of our great content. If you have questions, you could go ahead and ask them there, uh, or you can always email us at support at getbuyside.com. And the way to find our Buy Side Insiders group uh, is either going to www.buysideinsiders.com or uh, going to Facebook and finding Buy Side Insiders. Okay, really quickly, I don't think I mentioned this in the beginning, I do have everybody on mute. So if you do have any questions, there is a questions box on the right-hand side. We do have a Q&A at the very end, so go ahead and enter them as we go through, and we'll go ahead and ask them. If I'm talking too fast, if you want us to revisit something on the screen, if there's anything that you'd, uh, questions you'd like, go ahead and ask them in that question section, and we'd be happy to answer those. Okay, so now we're gonna jump into buy side. Okay, so when we first log in, we're gonna get to our dashboard here. Now this is gonna be one of our uh, other webinars and hopefully it's more populated than this. This is a demo account, so there's nothing on this dashboard right now. However, what we're gonna do is go over to our marketing suite. So it is over here, our home valuation site. So under marketing suite, we're going to home valuation site and it's gonna take you here. Now, before we keep going, I have a question for all of you. And I'm gonna put a poll on the screen right now. So if you uh, use a social platform for your business, go ahead and let me know right now. So that poll is launched. Go ahead and let me know if you use a social platform. Uh, and the, the reason that I'm asking this is because 
you can share this on your social platform. As we go through, and we're talking about your home valuation page, this is one of those things that's set up, it has your branding, uh, it has your information on it, and your client can see a ton of great information on it, but not only that, it's something that I send out, I can then work with clients, I'm closing transactions, and now, I have new leads coming to me already, automatically. So we have that that's gonna come to us. And I see 91% of people have a social platform. So let's go ahead and close that poll. And the reason I say that is because there's a few different ways that we can add this to our, uh, get people to see it. One is you can add it into your email signature uh, or you can share it on social media. Again, we're gonna go into more depth on how to share this in your social media and your email signature in a later webinar. I think that's the fourth one on the list. So if you wanna go ahead and check that out, uh, you can sign up for it today. But just to show you that you can, this is how you would do it is from this page. Okay, so now just to show you how simple this is to get this report, they're gonna click that link and it's gonna take them here. It's gonna be this page. And as simple as this is, they're going to get such powerful information. So what I'm gonna do now is type in an address. So we're gonna do this one and we see I, it already populates. So I can see the address right there. And as soon as I click on that, boom, it's gonna start loading that page. And what that loading screen is telling me is that it's getting those signals. It's getting that information from all of those different places that we saw. It's consolidating it into one place and it gives me this great report. And look how fast that was. That happens really quickly. And now all they did was enter their address and they're gonna be able to see all of this. So one, that page, that home valuation estimator page had my branding on it. It has my picture, it's got my name, it's got my contact information. So if they're ready to contact me already, they're just looking for that, they can see it, boom, right there, top of the fold. Now they also can see the address that they typed in and we have the bedrooms, bathrooms and square footage right up there. Now let's say, that this house is a four bedrooms, three and a half bathrooms. And where we pulled this from, it, it it's three and a half. Now who's actually gonna care that this is three and a half bathrooms? It's the homeowner. So the person that typed this in. So we're tugging at their heartstrings right now. If this isn't right, we give them the chance to update it, right? So I have my little pencil icon here. Now you'll notice that when I did this, I clicked on that link, I entered in the address and it gave me this page. I didn't have to sign in. There was no forced registration. There was none of that. But if I click on this pencil, it's gonna ask them to verify ownership. So I wanna make sure that they're the owner of this. Now it is really simple. All they have to do is click on Facebook uh, and it will ask, um, it'll just ask, are you the owner? Yes, continue as Tom, and I'll be able to see that. So I, it's just, am I that owner? I've now verified, we've logged in with Facebook. There we go. So uh, when did I purchase this property? Let's say 2016, it's the next step there. Now I can add that in and I can change my bath to three and a half bathrooms. Okay, so now, uh, I'm gonna scroll down just a bit because that's the owner, that's the person that can edit that. Uh, now, we wanna show them their estimated home value. And the first thing you see here is the Google Street View and people geek out about this. They see this and they go, that's my neighbor's house. That's my other neighbor's house. That's my house, there it is. So they can actually see their house on this screen. So they know when they're sharing this, when, they're, when you're going to share this with your clients, they can actually see this information and the picture of their house. And just under that is our three bubbles. So now we have three estimates here. And what is this really telling us? Is it that we should pick one of these values and just make that our home valuation? No, of course not. We wanna get as much for, at, for it as we can. And the variation here is $786,000 all the way up to $1,092,000. So there is a variation of what, $225,000. That's a huge variation. So what is that information really telling me? It's telling me that I need somebody that knows what they're talking about to help me price my listing. The necessity for an agent is apparent right here, right from the top. So once they come to that realization, what do we want them to do? I want them to contact me, right? I want them to say, hey, you know what? I need some help. I need some help listing uh, my, my property here. I need some help picking out what the price is. So let's go ahead and select contact Joe because we give them that call to action right there. We have the information, we show them their house. We want to give them the opportunity to say, hey, you know what, I've seen enough. Let's go ahead and contact Joe. So let's do that. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my name in here. Now this is as simple as it is to fill this out. And this is on all browsers. 
boom, it's already filled out. I just clicked my name, <laughs> there it is. And that's just from saved information that I've entered in before. Now it enters in your name, email, phone number, and what are you? So I am a seller. Let's go ahead and I'm a seller and say that. And again, it pre-populates the data that we already put in there. So I know that this was the date of the address that I just searched. So I'm gonna do that. And what's my approximate home value? Well, I saw $1 million on this. So let's go ahead and put that in here. So I know what that is. It, hey, it showed me the, to me up above. Let's go ahead and put that in there. And the time frame. let's say eh, three to six months. So I wanna have a new home in three to six months. Let's go ahead and contact Joe. Now I'll show you in a minute where this goes, but that's it. Now it goes out and I can uh, contact this person. So they this is now a new lead. And it was that simple. It, they clicked on this, they looked up their own home and now I'm contacting you. And we gave you the tools to do that. What is the condition of your property? So this is another one of those things where we always put it to needs work and what does everybody think their home is worth? They think it's excellent, right? Everybody thinks their home is excellent. So we're gonna give them the opportunity to do that. But again, we have to verify ownership first. We wanna make sure that they are the owner. So whether they did that on the top or down here, they can do that. But again, these come from, those values up on top, they come from an algorithm. And Zillow and all of those other places, that home valuation is exactly what it claims to be, an estimate. It is an estimate. They even call it as estimate. And they do that because that is an algorithm that predicts that value, but they don't know that you added in a new bathroom. They don't know that you just re-landscaped. So whether somebody did just re-landscape and they're going, needs work, my house looks great. What are you talking about? They can then add that in uh, and just, they have to verify that they are the owner. So we're gonna go ahead and scroll down and we now have a heat map here, which is showing the activity. So where are people looking for homes? Now I can see that I'm smack dab in the middle of an orange section, which is a good place to be, but it's certainly not very active. But all of that is gonna help us talk to our client, right? We have this buyer heat map uh, and we can say, you know what, pricing our listing right the first time is important and this is why, because we are in an area that is active, but it's not very active. But it's also another talking point that we can use. So if we say, hey, you know what? As soon as those places that are very active start getting way competitive and people get denied three or four times or the prices are too high, what are they gonna do? They're gonna start searching in less active areas. So we wanna make sure that we're ready for that. We have those potential buyers, which we're gonna be able to show them. All right, if we keep scrolling down, now we have by price range. So I can actually see, uh, how many people are looking for this listing by both price range and bedroom. So these are very large numbers. <laughs> these, your numbers probably won't be this big, but by price range in this area, we're noticing that, let's say it was down here, we can see the blue one, it's 128,000 people that are searching for a listing at that price range. In fact, by bedroom, this was a four plus bedroom. I could see 35% of people that are out there looking for homes are looking for a house that's just like the one I have. So you can show them, look how many people are looking for your listing. In fact, just below that is your funnel. And this is where you can show them those nice big numbers. Now this again is a huge, huge number, but 1.2 billion people are currently on, uh, online looking at buy side realty uh there are looking for listings there is that many people out there still looking for listings in the last 90 days just underneath that 301,000 people are looking for a listing in the same school district so the same school district there's still 300 uh yeah 301,000 people in that school district they're looking for almost 60,000 are looking in the same school district and in the same price range, and 58,000 are looking in the same school district in the same price range for a four bedroom house. So we can show them, you know what? Look how many buyers are out there. I'm not gonna shoot in the dark. We're not gonna be, we have the information here to prove to our clients that there are a lot of people out there. Now, who are we gonna give them those buyers? Are we gonna show them, hey, it's this person and here's their phone number? No, of course not, because why would they need us if we did that? But we're showing them that we have that information and that we can contact those buyers. Now, just to, for a little bit more information on that data side, which is, I love this screen because I'm such a huge data geek, but when I'm out there, I can show them of over the last three years, what have, how have 
the listing's been sold in this area in the, by this zip code. So I can see 150 homes sold in Q4 of 2019. Boom, right there. Uh, 176. And in fact, down here, I can keep going back for three years, but I actually have the average. So 150 homes sold per quarter in my zip code for about what I was pricing my listing as. So what this tells us is there are buyers out there. Over the last few years, there have been at least this many buyers in that area. Now, I don't have to say there's, a, there's not 150 people that are going to buy your home. I only need one, and I have all of those buyers here. And just below that are some recent sales. So I can show them the top 10 recent sales that are similar to my listing and for a similar price range. We can see 758,000 all the way up to $905,000. So there are listings that are being sold within the last 18 months in my area. So there are not only buyers, I can show you what that home value is, but there are also comparable things that we can show them right here from your home valuation page. And again, you can show them this or they can discover this on their own because we're sending this out for them to see. Okay, so after all of that great information, what do we want them to do? I want them to contact me. So again, at the bottom of the page, I have that call to action right there. So I can hit that contact Joe button and again, send them that great information. And I also have received monthly updates. And again, this was on the top of the page as well. So next to your branding, let's go ahead and scroll up to the top because it's on the bottom here and we can see, let's go all the way up. There it is. It is also up here as well. So let's say somebody saw this, they think, wow, this is great information. This is really cool. You know what? Not really ready to buy or sell yet. Well, we still want to provide that great information. We don't want them to forget. So they can give their first last name and email address and they can get this report month over month so they can watch the market as it changes. So whether they're ready to buy or sell yet or they're keeping an eye on it, we can stay in communication. We can stay in flow with that person month over month as we go through the years and when they are ready to buy or sell who are they going to turn to the person that was providing them that information and that can answer those two questions that every client has okay so really quickly before we jump into our q a and i love it i see questions pouring in already um we're gonna just go to my leads here. So under your marketing suite, we're gonna go ahead and click on my leads. And this is where those things go. So I can see, hey, there I am. There it is, there's my Facebook, perfect. Uh, the owner name, which is actually, it's my brother-in-law, <laughs> there he is, uh, and the address. So when people do contact you, it does go into your dashboard, it's right here. So I claimed it as well, so I know that that person claimed their listing. So we have a few things, and again, we're gonna go over this in a future webinar, but just to show you when you use your home valuation page, this is where those leads go. All right, if you have any questions about anything, go ahead and type that in the questions box, Todd, we're gonna go ahead, are you still with us? I hope so. We're gonna go ahead and get started with our q and I am here, Tom, great job. Beautiful, thank you, sir. Okay, so the first question, uh, will the replay be, be sent out? I have a few, uh, I have to leave a few minutes early. Answer, yes. So anybody that registered for this webinar, you're gonna be able to see it over again. I know I do talk really fast. So if you have any questions uh, or if you wanna view this again, we will be posting it, but you also will get an email as long as you register. Okay, so next question, Todd, is this area specific? Yes, it's area specific to the boundaries of your brokerage. The boundaries of your brokerage. So any, is that by MLS? That varies by, um, no, not by, well, the question is, does the data pull from within your brokerage and your brokerage um, uh, boundaries, I guess, for lack of better words, are defined, I believe, by the zip codes um, in which the offices are in, I believe. Perfect. And which kind of leads into our next question, which is where is this data pulled from? That will vary by brokerage. Um, it's buyer data aggregated from the various CRMs you use. And uh, like I said, it varies by our clients, sometimes from realtor.com, sometimes from safe searches from realtor.com or Zillow. Gotcha. Okay. Um, 
So next is, are we supposed to be able to log in to buy side? Mine isn't working. Great question. Uh, we're going to go ahead and I think I have your email address here. I definitely have your name. So we're going to go ahead and follow up with you after this webinar. Uh, and we'll, we'll send somebody to call you to make sure that you can get in and use buy side. Okay, next, uh, for the Facebook site, how do I, uh, how do I log in? I think that means how do I join the group? Is that, yeah, if, if, if so, you'll just uh, click join. I, I'm assuming you've gotten that far. Um, just search in the search bar up top for Buy Side Insiders, and I will prove you immediately. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, and this is for any uh, clients. Uh, if you're not a client, I, I don't think we're going to let you in, but uh, definitely contact us, and we'd love you to be a client, and then you will be uh, allowed to come in and see our Buy Side Insiders group. But if you are a current client, yes, we will let you in. And again, there's some great content in there. There's a way for us to talk. Uh, to, if you have any questions, it's a community page. So if you have uh, any success stories, please share those with us. We would love to see them and love to hear them. Uh, okay. Is the buyer... Uh, is the info of the buyer looking at that home real or just an idea of the buyer? Um, which part? Is there any more to that question? I'm not exactly sure what they're asking. Good question. Let's see. Um, the buyer oh, did. Uh, I got it. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. So <laughs> is the info of the buyer looking at the home real or is it just an idea of the buyer looking? So that is real data. Right. Right. Like I said, okay. this, this is aggregated from the uh, um, various CRMs that you all use, uh, whether it's like Showing Time or um, um, or any other CRMs that you would use for to input your buyers. We're pulling all that data in, so it's real activity. Right on. Okay. Um, I am with a BHHS uh, brokerage, and I just got an inquiry about a property in Western New York. Congratulations, that's great. I'm not sure if that's a question. So if that is a question, go ahead and let us know. Uh, but that is awesome. Uh, why do some listings only have one estimate? That is a great question. Todd, why do some listings only have one estimate? Uh, those estimates are third-party public data companies, and at times they can have limited data on a given property. Maybe it's new construction, um, various other reasons. But if there is not enough data, they just simply will not show. Gotcha. And it's sort of a follow-up question. Uh, why would a comparable condo in the same building have different numbers? Um, I would have to see that. Uh, example to to look into it. If you could reach out to support it, get buy side, uh, dot com, and I will grab that email and I will answer. I will look into it. Uh, okay. Next question: How does it know what zip codes we serve? Uh, that will vary by brokerage. Um, again, if you wanted to reach out, I could look into your specific uh, brokerage and, and get you that answer support at getbuyside.com. Definitely, but that is also part of the setup, and that's a great question, is is how does it know? And well, we have a, a world-class programmer team that goes in and tells the system what each brokerage area each brokerage is serving. So if you do have any questions about if there isn't a zip code that's working, or for whatever reason, uh, it it is we do may tell it which areas it can serve so that is a great question but yes we it does know by brokerage uh which zip codes you're going to serve okay what does the top number in the funnel represent is it visitors or is it clicks that would be clicks that's again all um data from maybe zillow or realtor.com save searches save properties so those, Great those question, are... but it is also a really good number to share with your clients, to just to go, you know what, there's 1.2 billion people out there that's clicking on these links. There's people that are looking for homes. So there are that many. Again, we only need one person to buy your home, but there's 1.2 billion out there that are at least searching. And we have the data that can show you which ones are real. So uh, 
good question. It is clicks, but it does continue to filter down. And that's sort of the reason that funnel exists is we have, here's the number of clicks, here's the number of clicks in your area uh, that are looking for in your district. And it continues to filter down and filter down till we get to that 60,000 number on the bottom. That's like, this is how many people are looking for a home just like yours in your area. So very good question. Uh, how does someone logging into logging in via Facebook guarantee that a person is actually the homeowner? I think what you're talking about is the verification. So, uh, Todd, when somebody comes in and they verify themselves, how, and they're let's say they change it to three and a half bathrooms, how are we verifying that that person's the actual homeowner? Uh, well, like we saw inside the dashboard, we pull uh, in that my lead screen we pull from public record the owner's name and it's they'll be right next to each other yeah if you could navigate back to the my lead screen um so you can see that tom is not the homeowner there so you can see yeah the owner's name on record is it's actually my brother-in-law but i'm the one that claimed it so you can actually see who that person is so if they do change something if they change that you can actually notice that that is uh not the right person very good question Uh, once I have the listing, can I call people that showed on the list uh, to be looking for property in that area? Could you, so once you have the listing, could you read that second part again? So once I have the listing, can I call the people that showed on the list to be looking for a property in that area? I think what that means is if somebody showed up uh, in that property on the report here, or let's say they are a lead, can you call them once you've already won the listing? Right. If there's a buyer showing there on a list as a potential match, they'll be assigned a buyer ID. And um, you'll see on the top right of the top menu there, uh, the find button. You can search by buyer ID and then find that uh, the agent representing that buyer. Right. And again, this is a way that we can find those new seller leads, find those buyer leads. This is one of those tools that can capture all of that. So that is exactly the purpose that you would want to use it for. So once you have that listing, once you've called it and you're finding potential buyers, yes, we can use that information to talk to those buyers or at least the agent that they are uh, working with. Again, you know, this is uh, the tool that's going to help you win and sell more listings and do it faster. And that is exactly how your question. Great and, question. And Tom, I kind of skipped over something there. I, it's something we're going to cover in a future webinar. But once you do get that listing, once it goes live in the MLS, we will pull that in and we will show you the, the agents, the matching buyers and their agents and open up communication within the app. So that's kind of a big part of it. Uh, like I said, we're, we're going to go in further in depth on that in a future webinar, but that is a possibility. But that is a function. Okay. Awesome, I'm really excited about that. Now the next question, I'm, I think this is great. So how can I access my branding, uh, my branding version of buy side where I can hit the social media? Great question. And that is if you go to social uh, marketing suite on top uh, and you go to home valuation site, on the bottom, you can click email signature and that will give you this um, this great little text here where you can paste that in your signature. You can paste it in your husband's signature, your wife's signature, your son's signature, anybody. We, anybody that has an email signature, let's go ahead and put that in there so that that tool is not getting emailed out to anybody that we're contacting. And the social media one is the next one over. So you can hover over that and see all of the social media networks that you can use. But again, we're going to go into more depth about that in a webinar in just a few weeks. Okay, so I see a few other questions in here. Uh, people are familiar with Zillow estimates, but do you have info on the other companies? So the other companies that are giving us that home valuation estimate on the top of the page, uh, Todd, where are we getting these from? These are, again, these are third-party public data companies. Um, home valuation is one, ePraisal.com is another. They have their own algorithms and data sources that we pull from, or that they pull from, sorry. Um, so but there are various others that are turned on. Again, it varies by brokerage. Gotcha. So yeah, there are a few different sites that we'll use to pull this information in, but the point here isn't that we're giving them a value for what their home is worth. We want them to see the variation. We want them to see the variability and how much 
the difference is. So again, we saw that almost a $200,000 difference here, a little bit more. So we wanna make sure that what we're showing them is that they need an agent. So we're giving them this great information of what their home is roughly worth, but what are you actually gonna price it as? Well, somebody that's an expert should be the one to answer that question. So when we're sending this report out, what we're saying is, you need somebody like me to help you with your listings. So we're giving them this report and a way to contact you. Okay, I see what is the web address I need to add, my emails and Facebook, et cetera, uh, or what is the address, got it. So that is, again, if you go to your marketing suite, that's where you're gonna find that. If you go uh, from your dashboard, there's that link that says marketing suite, and they are on the bottom. That might be a question that I answered in that might have been asked already. Can you customize the background of the link where you insert the address? So that first link, when we click on, uh, there we go, close. So now I can edit my bathrooms here. Three and a half, perfect. Uh, okay, so when you go to, sorry, that was <laughs> that's not answering your question. I just wanted to show you, you could do that. Um, okay, so when we're here, can you customize this page? So Todd, is there a way to customize the background of this page? Uh, that is broken down by brokerage. Um, at time of the time of setup, each brokerage decides which photo they want to be the background. So it's not just gotcha. my. I love it. So yeah, so that goes by brokerage. So if you do have a background image that you like, uh, you know, we, we can take it up with our brokerage because it is going to be different depending on brokerage. But uh, they they brokerage will always have, I feel like, our best interest at heart just because the more money you make, the more money they make. So we want to make sure that the, the best tools that are available um, are for you so that we have this here. Okay. Uh, Okay, I've gotten some leads, but the only information that's provided is address of the property being searched. There is no contact information for the lead. So if it's safe to say the customer's perspective, don't call us, we'll call you. The, so the way that that is um, worded, what I think you're asking is if somebody puts their information in, they don't want to be contacted. And realistically, if somebody gives you their email address or gives you their contact information, I think it's safe to assume that you're going to contact them. So it can be a warm lead, especially if it's coming from this. Um, but again, they'll let you know pretty quickly. So very good question. I want to jump in there, Tom. Um, yes. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but the way I interpreted the question was that if they check the valuation of a home but do not leave contact information, was that is that that's kind of what I got from the question at that point. Uh, a strategy that a lot of our clients use that we recommend and the storm is picking up here at my house so I'm sorry but um, if, if you can't hear me but um, what we recommend doing is reaching out to the homeowner that's why we provide the homeowner's name in that um, in that dashboard under my lead screen reach out to the homeowner say something along the lines of uh, someone check the value of your home and we have X amount of buyers um, so we actually have some scripts for that. If you have, if you want to see those, we, we have them in our help center. Uh, definitely reach out to support at getbuyside.com and ask them for those scripts, and uh, I'll get them over to you. Okay, how many training segment webinars are there on BuySide and when will they be scheduled? Great question. Uh, we do have a sign-up sheet. Uh, let me go ahead and put that in our chat um, of where that is. Uh, and I think that is a good place to end. So thank you all for being here. We're going to monitor the chat box for just a couple more minutes. Um, uh, but what we're, uh, next week, we're going to be talking about who is going to buy your home. So we're going to talk about your buyer market analysis, your BMA. Uh, so that is what we're going to be looking at. So we have our BMA report here and that is right on the top. You can check that out. We can add in the address and we're going to go over the intricacies of what that buyer market analysis is and, uh, what we can do with it, how we should speak to it and what we're, what we should do with it in front of our client. Thank you all for being here. I'm going to go ahead and drop that link in the chat in just a moment. Uh, but if you have any other questions, go ahead and put them in the chat box and we will reach out to you uh, and we will see you next time.